Howdy, y'all. Oh, so it's time. I was about to do my Texas accent. Should I? Should I though? Probably not. This is from like Halloween. It makes me look like a witch. So I think I'm gonna take it off. It's... It's time for my Red Dead Redemption review. It's not the Uber edition that came with the big box. It's the special edition. It just came with a map and some codes for something, uh, for like some kind of outfit or something like that, and a horse. Nice for when you haven't unlocked the whole map so that you could kind of see what's available and stuff. The game is a third person action adventure um, with RPG elements as well. It was developed by Rockstar and it was published by Rockstar Games and uh, Take Two. I think I want to start off with the narrative. The game is, it's not perfect. Some people have called it perfect and it's not perfect because I did encounter some glitches, but everything else is just so well done. You want to just thank the developer for putting in so many details, so many little details, like little details where people, some of the developers sometimes go, oh, they'd never notice, don't even bother with that. A lot of gamers do, do notice. A lot of us do. And for a lot of us, it's our job to notice. So the developers that do put in all their effort into the details and the little things that maybe not everybody would notice, but the, for those of us that do notice, it's just, it's like, thank you for doing that. The game captures the, the spirit of, a, of Westerns so well, like the story being told, it's intense, it's passionate, it's dramatic, it's, uh, it's, it involves a lot of emotions when it comes to relationships. Um, it, 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 it deals with good and evil and the thin line that separates both of them. The, the best word that I could use is that it feels so real. It just, you believe it immediately. The, the immersion is, is an instant. You are immediately transported into that time period, into that story, into that gang, into that character. Um, which is Arthur Morgan. Just a little bit of background for this game, but the numbering is a bit off. It's it's more like this is Red, Red Dead Redemption 1 and the first one is Red Dead Redemption 2. I made a video where I talked about the timeline and I went into dates and all that, like how old John Marston was and all this and when does it actually take place. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 takes place in 1899 that's where it starts, but it spans a, a time frame of like 10 years or something like that. Arthur Morgan looks older as time goes by, which I think is just so, so cool. Again, the details, the way that you see that they're different, that, that they've grown, that they've matured throughout time. The gameplay of, the, of Rockstar Games feels very similar. Whether you play Grand Theft Auto, whether you play Red Dead, whether you play anything of Rockstar, the gameplay is very, very similar. It, it always has a, f a familiar feeling, which I think is good because it, it, it gives Rockstar a stamp of familiarity. Even though the gameplay feels very similar to the, their, their other games, the graphics and everything else, the details, you feel the passing of time when it comes to the technology being used. They have evolved, they have improved their their systems, the UI, everything. So it is familiar, but it's it's always taking taken a step up. I love the way that they do the tutorials. They make it in the game. They make it part of the narrative. They it's like they don't they don't treat you like a baby, like Arthur doesn't know how to do any of this stuff. So when they take the time to incorporate it into the narrative, which I know is not easy to do, um, and make it feel normal and make it feel, you know, like with the fishing, Arthur's like, oh, I'm not so good at fishing, but you know, he knows how to fish, but he's like, oh, I'm not that great. But he'll go fishing with some of the members or some of the, the characters uh, in, in the game and they'll be like, oh yeah, we'll just do this. And you know, here's some tricks or here's a trick that I know how to do. There's different controls and, and uh, for everything. There's different controls for when you're riding a horse. There's different controls for when you're fishing, when you're hunting, you know, this button will do that. And it, whenever you press down on the left trigger, uh, you get more options. You could talk to people. Uh, I would get confused because sometimes it would say, press 
or, or the right trigger to to point your gun and I would just press it and I would shoot the person. I think I used fast travel once and this is a huge map. You could go literally wherever you want. It's just so well done and the places look amazing. They just look gorgeous. The weather systems are just fascinating to me. The thunderstorms, oh my God. There are so many different types of weather systems in this game. <gasps> if you push a button, you could see the temperature and you kind of want to keep an eye on the, on the temperature because what you wear affects that so if you're too hot you'll start losing some health slowly and if you're too cold also you'll start losing some health slowly what you're wearing actually makes a difference a, a, an outfit for for hot weather and an outfit for cold weather on your horse so that you could change in case arthur actually starts shivering and he, you could see the breath you could see the horse's breath and i know the there's a thing in the um, on the internet where people just make it a big huge deal about the horse's testicles shrinking in the cold <laughs> I never experienced that because I, I, for the most part, I had female horses. I do have a male horse and I'm gonna try it. If I was gonna travel for a long time where I was like, oh my God, I need to really, it's gonna take me forever to get over there. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I, I pretend like I was gonna go on a journey and I was, I was, I had to pack my clothes, you know, what clothes I was gonna need. I was gonna need to go hunting and, and I would have to bring back, you know, supplies for the camp and stuff. So I would actually plan for these and it was just so relaxing. When the sun would go down, I'd make my camp. Oops! It was the most relaxing thing for me that you could do it if you want to, you don't have to. like. Arthur could take baths because he gets dirty. He His hair grows, which I was fascinated with. I was just fascinated. Even bald. I don't know if it grows when you're bald though. I would like to see that. I hadn't had this much fun with a game for years. The horse, I absolutely adore horses. I wish we could have owned more horses. Like Rockstar, come on, give us a horse ranch. I want all the horses. Um, I'd go out there and I'd look for them in the wild. And, and there's so many different ones. And last night I just got the one that I wanted, the the Mustang. <laughs> I got two Mustangs and they're gorgeous horses. I wish I had a male and a female, but I have two females. One of them I named it Bullet and the other one I named it Shelby. Extra brownie points for you, those of you that get the reference. <laughs> <laughs> I got both of the rarest horses in the game, which is one the white Arabian horse and the tiger striped Mustang. All the horses are, are for different uh, different things. Like one of the horses has more health, like that's the war horse. Some of them, like the racing horse has more stamina. When you get a horse, not only do they kind of like, they get spooked easier. They don't, they don't come immediately when you whistle. You know, once you start to level up the horse a little bit to level four, that's just the full, the full horse bonding level. There is a difference as to how you treat your horse, whether you feed it, whether you brush it and all that, and it gets dirty. Another thing that I noticed was the, the control of the horse. I was like, holy crap. When you first get a horse and they're not, fully bonded to you you will you'll you'll move to the right or to the left and you're like and the horse won't move they won't turn left and they won't turn right and you're like the hell and you're galloping and you're gonna avoid you're trying to avoid a tree that's a whole another story <laughs> if i could sit here and tell you how many times <laughs> I ran into trees. I'd be here all, all, all. 
week long, I think. <laughs> At first it was funny, and then later I was like, okay, that's kind of funny still. And then... I swear my horse is blind. Like, I get it, okay, I'm not looking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing and I'm shooting at people that are coming at me to kill me, but my horse is looking forward. But if you first got that horse and he's not bonded to you, he or she will not do what you ask him to do. It makes you feel like you're on the horse, almost, weirdly. It makes you feel like you're pulling the reins and you're just like, come on freaking horse turn once it's fully bonded to you it just becomes a part of you it, it will move immediately when you do the slide turn i love that i go really fast and then just <laughs> it's so fun i love the horse the mocap the details on the face holy crap sometimes voice actors will do mocap but they'll just do main motions they'll, they'll do different you know, different facial expressions and different movements, the ones that they want them to do, they'll say just walk or whatever, and they'll record, record that and then include it in the game. That's how most games do it. A lot of Sony games, like uh, Naughty Dog and uh, a lot of Rockstar games, um, they will record as if they were recording a movie. I think they said they had like, they all had like 60 cameras. Since 2013, that's when they they met and they actually started to work together. You feel the camaraderie between them. That's one of the reasons why I think that this game should be played before Red Dead 1 because it gives John Marston that baggage that you just had to imagine in Red Dead Redemption, Redemption 1. You just had to imagine what these characters meant to him. It adds so much more heart and soul to that game. And I already adored that game, Red Dead Redemption 1. But now I just appreciate it so much more. Arthur is just, more than John, uh, Arthur is a character that just is a whirlwind. Like Arthur is, he's everything in one you fall in love with him immediately arthur is the pillar you could choose his the intensity of his morality if you want him to be honorable or if you want him to not be honorable and you get different outcomes from it so it's cool the options that they give you i think the best character development for arthur is when you make him go honorable that's when you really see the, the dynamic aspect of who arthur is and how he struggles i love that kind of intensity in a character i was i was like yelling at characters and i was like you know i was really reacting and i fell in love with some of these characters there were some ui glitches here and there sometimes the the hitch horse button wouldn't pop up you know sometimes you had to like angle the horse specifically so that you could get that the the hitch so that you could hit your horse and that was important because i it was like it said if you hit your horse you you, you don't have to worry about people stealing your horse and i was like oh hell no nah. i'm not gonna co go into a shop come out and fit find out later that somebody stole my horse oh my god that's gonna make me cry so i always hitched my horse there was one time where the button was just not there and i was like why isn't it coming up and i'd angle my horse in every direction and i was like oh my. it wouldn't pop up anywhere so i had to reload um, and then it started to pop. It was fine. It was just a little glitch. There was another little glitch where I couldn't open the, the, the wheel, the weapon wheel. I couldn't open it. It just wouldn't come up. And I was like, what the hell? Okay, I reloaded. The issue's fixed. Perfect. We're golden. If the issue hadn't been fixed and it was like, now I just have to play the game like that, then I would be like, this, <laughs> we got some problems. Some of the encounters were a bit repetitive, like the ones with the little white dot. But the side quests were so good. Like some of the side quests were really, really good. Especially towards the end. Oh my god. They got really emotional. They got really like, and I was like, man, this is just a side quest. Some people don't even encounter this. Some people don't even run into this side quest. And it's just, it's one of the most gorgeous side quests ever. Like, you know, it's like, oh my god, I'm so glad I, I got that. Uh, the game also encourages so many types of play styles. Um, not only the point of view, you could play in first person, you could play in third person, different camera, I think there's three different camera angles for third person, and not just the points of view, but also just the play styles. Explore in a more stealthy way, 
go guns blazing, sniping, fight on your horse, you could fight off your horse, you could go on stage coaches, you could jump jump on trains and stuff, even if they, if that's not what you had to do, you could. One thing that I absolutely adored was Arthur's journal. Oh my god. Arthur's journal was one of the most brilliant things in this game. So many times in games when you do a mission or when you do a side quest, whatever, anything, you don't know what the character thought about it. If you think about it, you just you just know what you think about it. You just know what happened. But with Arthur's journal, you know what he thinks how he felt emotionally. I would just sit there, read his journal. And I rarely ever do that, where I read the documents that you find. And then he draw a picture. He was an artist, found out so much about him. <laughs> Even just walking around and being like, oh cool, like a plant or whatever. You craft things all over the place. So you, there's, there's um, stuff for you to forage everywhere. Yeah, and then you check in his journal and he drew it and he put burdock. Even the dogs, like the dogs that you would encounter, or any animal, it was the most brilliant thing. Am I the only one that was blown away by that? Because if I am, I'm not, I'm not gonna be surprised. <laughs> As they usually do, Rockstar is one of those developers that really knows how to strike a balance between narrative and gameplay. And, and world. So that's pretty much it. That was my experience and my review for Red Dead Redemption 2. Please let me know in the comments down below your favorite gameplay aspect or mechanic. I absolutely do recommend this game. I know it's not available for PC and I'm, I hope one day it will be uh, because it's, it's an amazing game and it should be available to everyone. And I know that a lot of uh, the, the the developers in Rockstar worked really hard in overtime and crunch, horrible crunch hours for this game. Um, and I, I feel really bad about that. I don't like that. It's not healthy. They should be proud of what they've done. I am so sorry that it had to be, that it was the way that it was and that they had to work that hard, but it paid off. Um, and I hope they find some comfort in that. I hope Rockstar changes as well because this, this has gone on for a few years now and start trying to incorporate a more healthy environment while still um, making great games and putting in like a lot of, you know, hard work into it, but not to the point where, you know, where these people are struggling. But thank you so much to those developers for putting the blood, sweat and tears into this game because it was a gorgeous gorgeous game. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.